how's it going people welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the forever arsenal podcast hope you're all good uh, it's a special podcast we're back live again i think it's the first time this calendar year we're actually going live if i'm not mistaken i know we said we're going to try to you know, go live a couple more times as usual but you know through one reason or another it hasn't happened but we're here live now so make sure you hit the like button i'm seeing people hundreds of people waiting already apologies for the little delay it's not like the delays you go on big six and whatnot so yeah, it is what it is, people. Hit the like button. Big up Jordan, Lee, James. Big up everyone waiting. Big up everyone in the chat. What are we saying, man? It's a good one. I, I can't lie. For, for us to go live tonight, top of the league, Liverpool City result went our way. Most goals scored, least goals conceded, most informed team at, the, at this moment in time. Obviously, there's a Champions League, you know, second leg knockout we're going to talk about later. But let's leave that for later because, yeah, that's a completely different conversation, a completely different mood, I'd say. But, yeah, what are we saying, man? Lee, I've got, well, I, I usually start with you because you go to the game. I went to the game as well. Yeah, um, went with but, your son as well, like, yeah, so yeah. very nice. Yeah, man. Enjoying yeah. box life, enjoying life. Yeah, I got you know what I saw. You know, I, I see you going all the time in the box, and I, and I got a bit jealous. I thought I need to, I need to go and get a little taste of that life as well. But yeah, yeah, my bank. I'll tell you what, like, your son's first game, and he's in a box. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> the no, privilege. I mean, like, it's, it's, it's a privilege, Lee. You know what I mean? Going on dead, like you know. You, know, <laughs> like, you know what? You know what? My first I mean, game was in a box. Was it? <laughs> Yeah, well, like, box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I lied. It's not my bank balance. I need to. I need to retract that. Big up Elisa. He's a big fan of the big six. He's a big supporter of Arsenal Football Club. Listen, he he reached out earlier this season. We've we've been to a couple of games and um yeah, I asked him if, if there's ever a possibility that there's a couple spare. I'd like to take my son and uh, you know, I'd like to take him in a box environment where just in case we, we need to control proceedings, because he's only three years old, then I've got enough space to to manoeuvre, change nappies, do all of that stuff. So big up Elisa and also big up Olivia as well because Olivia took the picture that I posted on Instagram. So for the rest of my life anyway, I'm going to remember Olivia for that picture. And luckily she was a photographer as well. So, And she's a big fan of the Forever Arsenal podcast actually. So she, I know she's watching that. She's probably in the live chat as well. So big up Olivia. I heard, I heard he's, a, he's a Kai Havertz fan, Turkish. Yeah, you know when you ask three-year-olds a question and say yes or no, more times you're going to say yes. You know. No, nope, we're not having that. <laughs> not having that. And listen, Robbie's, the only, Robbie's, not, Robbie's an imposing figure. Imagine to a three-year-old next to Robbie, they're probably thinking, shit, I better say yes or this could go left. Do you, know, do you know the best bit? Do you know the best bit about that fan cam was when he asked, you know, what was it, is, is Kai Havertz your favourite player? And you said yes or no. And he said yes, with proper confidence, may I say. And everyone behind, this is where this is where the AFTV crowd... Oh, here's the thumbs up. Just piss off. Um, here's where the, the AFTV crowd did you no favours. Because they all went, way, And then they went, waka, waka, eh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> he set everyone off. He got the crowd going. It was unreal. You know, I can't lie to you. Like, I know we're kind of sorry, people, if you're expecting football talk straight away, but it's gone, gone into this. But I started thinking over the last 12, 12 24 hours because... It, Listen, my son's name is Zekai, but it got highlighted in the last 24, 48 hours that Kai could be an abbreviation for a lot of people. So, yeah, that hit me. You know that you know that Waka Waka A song, the Shakira song? That's that's the first song he's learned to sing. He learned that I don't know, <laughs> randomly at his, at his mom's mom's house. He just started singing it. So, I'm, thinking, nah, I'm putting all this together now. We go to the game. Kai scored the winner. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, people. I don't know what's going on. Even when we got home, he turned to me and said, "Listen, you've got to change your opinion on Havertz because you're you're lacking <laughs> what, what, what an experience for him, though. That was for, for yes, his first man. game. Anybody who had that as your first game because it had it had anything really, didn't it? It was just the the atmosphere in there, like you know, it was was uh, unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. He's, just... he's he's more than three years old, isn't he? Yeah, he just turned three, January twenty eighth. Uh, I was trying to fit, do the maths and figure out if he was 29 months because that would have been unbelievable. <laughs> nah, that's too much. That's that, too would much. Have, that would have been extraordinary. He'll be well, we would, we would have him with, with Havertz shirts, both of us. If that if that one was true, I would have had to just succumb and say yes. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been unreal. <laughs> but yeah, no, big up so, that's an incredible experience, though. I remember my mm. first game, but I, I, I got into football really late. I mean, I, I think I went when I was like 11 or 12. Yeah, I was yeah, uh, three 0 against Watford. Thierry Henry hat trick from a box. It was great. 
Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, I can't lie. It's a pride, like, not, not pride. It's not a proud moment, but it's a big moment for me because, listen, Arsenal means so much to me. And that, obviously, you know, now I've got I've got someone, something that, that means so much more to me. So to, to bring them both together for the first time. And the first time of many, it's, it's a big moment. So, I, you know, we needed the win as well because I know Skull Fuggery was lurking. He, he would have probably cooked him on the intro tomorrow on the big six. And my son, <laughs> at three years old, I don't know if he's, yeah, I don't know if he's prepared <laughs> <laughs> it's no hold barred over on that show. I'm telling that you, it's brutal. That is brutal. That is no brutal. No you're old enough to go on AMTV, you're old enough to get clipped on big six. Yeah. <laughs> right. Don't look at the comments, Sam. Don't look at the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. All right, let's get into it because obviously we've started. Listen, it's it's all smiles all around. Every every angle we look at at the moment is all smiles. Um we're top of the league. That Liverpool City game earlier, perfect, perfect result, perfect result. But we had to get the job done, and and it's a job that we made harder for ourselves during the game, which we will probably touch in on. But let's just talk about where we are. I mean, it's been so long since we've had the the best goal difference in the league. It's been so long since we've scored the most, conceded the least. It's been so long since we've looked like you know the the best team in the league. I know last year, you know, especially the way we started the season, 100 percent you could say we started the season the right. best team in the league. But this is this is different. This feels different. A few weeks ago James asked, how do you compare it to last season? And I just felt that we're better equipped this season, even though we're behind, which is a bit weird. But we're not behind no more. <laughs> you know, a few hours ago, um we all hoped for the draw. We all hoped for the draw and that's exactly what we got. So now essentially with 10 games to go and 10 games is still a long time it is currently in our hands and if we can get the job done at the end of march against man city and by done i mean you know a positive result and we will talk about that closer to the time then it's looking rosy for us this season um who wants to start lee let's start with you man you you was at well, the game. you um, know i'm gonna but i've said it i've said it all all day today and some i was just saying on here like didn't enjoy the game one i i owe to yesterday like every single thing about it i didn't enjoy like you know apart from when that final whistle went it was just every time i thought Brent, every time brentford went forward i thought they was going to score every time we went forward i didn't think we was going to score and i just kept thinking it's going to be one of those games um but you know, like the Aaron Ramsdale thing and all that, like, you know what I mean? Think, oh, like it just couldn't it just couldn't have been a worse worse thing. But I don't think we all realise how big of that big that game was yesterday. It was I always say it was a massive, massive game. I felt that there was a little bit of pressure on us yesterday. I think it told showed in our game a little bit. We wasn't quite at it. But Listen, the biggest compliment I can give is I was speaking to some Brentford fans. They've never, ever played like that. Never played like that before. Um, even And, you know, don't forget last season, they went to the yeah, yeah, and won. Um, so you have to turn around and say, like, we, if we're doing something if teams like that. And I, I, by the way, I've got a lot of time for Thomas Frank. But, but when the whistle went in the end, all I'm, I'm slagging him off. Get out of there, Tony. <laughs> Yeah, horrible, but you know what I mean? Because they got under my skin. Brentford got under my skin yesterday, like, you know, so all credit for them for doing that. But I just want to say, like, yesterday, it's just a privilege to be in that stadium at the end. The songs at the end, you know, the players walking around and coming out at the end of it uh, and, and people, like, singing and dancing on the, on the streets, uh, you, you know. Uh, very, feel very, very blessed that I can go to games and... You know, the Emirates has never not been the greatest stadium to watch football at times, but at this moment in time, I don't think there's anywhere better. The atmosphere yesterday was just sensational, and it was just a pleasure to be there. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. You know, we talk about the, the turnaround with the club over the last three years. The fans, you know, the atmosphere in the stadium has has got to the best it's ever been in the stadium. Best it's ever been. You know, I I, I used to love Highbury, and, and and I do miss it a hell of a lot because the hybrid come with a lot of memories, but we moved into this stadium to to bring in more fans, to to compete with the elite and to to impart, create an atmosphere like this. Most elite clubs challenging for major trophies have this sort of atmosphere. And obviously over the years, it got sucked out of us, I think, um, through one reason or another. But last few years, and especially now, <laughs> it's, it's back to as good as it's ever been in my whole life. Jordan, um, I, I think I think you make a good point. I think it's important um, that we enjoy the experience. I mean, a few months back, um, <clears throat> we were talking about winning the pot, winning the league, and how 
how we want to do that. And, uh, and, I, and I've always been of the mindset that how you play football and the football that you watch is as important as winning. And I'm in the minority. Some Most fans are like, I just want to win. And if you can win playing well, that's a bonus. For me, it's not a bonus. It's an essential. Winning is essential, but enjoying the football that I'm watching is also... That's why I couldn't be a Chelsea fan. Because Chelsea fan mentality is just win at all costs, which is fine, but I can't... I, I need to... If you gave me 38 one nil wins, I wouldn't take it. I, I wouldn't take it. I need no. to know... That, don't give me that. Oh, 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 Turkish on my bro, life. That's better than the Invincibles, bro. 38 1 0 wins. No, I'd Turkish, sell myself. T- t- Turkish. You know why? For two reasons. <laughs> two reasons. First of all, he's done it again, and not he? He's done it again. No, no, let me tell you. Done. Let me, let me, let me, I'll give you, let me tell you. The first reason is because I pay too much money. Well, I don't anymore. I've given my, t- my ticket up now, but we pay too much money for our tickets to not be entertained. And I don't care what you say, 38 one nil wins is not entertaining. So I expect to win games, but I expect to also be entertaining what I'm watching. The second reason is that I want to win a Premier League title, but I'm not desperate. I'm not a Spurs fan. I'm not a Villa fan. I've seen my team win a Prem. So I'm not desperate in a way that Spurs fans would take one at 38 one nil wins. So hand on heart, I swear to God, I wouldn't take 38 one nil wins because style of play is important to me. It's important to me. I can't go to Arsenal and the Emirates and watch turgid football. With that's I, I can't. You might not believe me. It's the clean sheets. No. You, know, you wouldn't take thirty-eight clean sheets. <laughs> no, 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 he gets thirty-eight of them. He's not ever here. No, 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 clean, clean, clean sheets are my thing. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just, on, in all seriousness, enjoying the football I'm watching is is enjoyable, and I think that is part of why Saturday was so fun because it was dramatic late goal. We're playing good football. We are mm. playing good football that we go to the Emirates now w- knowing we're going to see some good football. That's important to me. So I- I'm in the minority. I'm in the huge minority. But style of play and enjoying my football is a prerequisite for my manager. It's not just winning trophies. It's I need to enjoy what I'm watching. And that's what I'm seeing right about now. But I accept. I'm in the minority. AFC Max. AFC Max has just given you a blue card. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, can, he can give me a blue card I'm just being honest but I was just kind of feeding off the point that you made there about it's fun going to the Emirates and this is what we pay our money for we pay our money to be entertained like I want to see good football I'm seeing that now like I think um, I think a Tottenham fan was making the point the other day that um, they're not actually miles better and this is before the Villa game they weren't miles better points wise than they were I think this time a year ago I might be wrong correct me if I'm wrong but the reason Spurs fans are so much happier is because the football's entertaining and they feel like they're going to give it a go. So yeah. while I don't subscribe to the I wouldn't take 38 one nils, I absolutely would. Um, s- style matters and, and it, everything fuels everything. The energy of the crowd fuels the players, but the football they're playing fuels the crowd and all that. And it's no coincidence. We were talking about the, the atmosphere being brilliant, but when was the first time this season, maybe post Man United, we won 3-1. When was the last time Man City was a massive atmosphere? And then probably all the way to Liverpool, probably talking three, four months before we saw that kind of level of atmosphere. But it's not just come back with a big game. It's come back with really good football. Like everything is energising everything and it feels like we're building momentum. So, right so l- l- let me ask you guys, if the last since Dubai, we've won every game 1-0, would we be starting these podcasts as happy and as buoyant as we are? No, we wouldn't. Not. No. We wouldn't be top. No. But yes, I get well, that, that as well. But the po- yeah. the point I'm making yeah. is that it's it's important to me. And I'm a no, one nil merchant. Be, Don't get happy, me twisted. I get what you mean. Because I'm a because... one I love my one nils, but yeah, 38, no. That's not yeah, the, the, because because no. there needs to be some stuff, some substance in terms of um <laughs> believing this can go on. When you see your team scoring 31 goals in you know seven games, and now it's what 33 in, in eight. That makes you believe that we can keep scoring our way to the title. Makes you believe we've got that. I get, I get the, yeah, I get the point. Ish. <laughs> Ish. But let's talk about the game in particular. Let's talk about the moments because um, there was a few moments for better or for worse. <laughs> yeah. Um, first half, I mean, Declan Rice puts us in the lead. Um, ben White assist. Ramsdale midway just before half time decides to let them back in it and Havertz pops up with the winner I mean you know what I think I think it's probably best to start on Havertz because we always do talk about him in some way shape or form 
um, for better or for worse, whether it's because of the price, whether it's because of the performance, the weight, whatever it is. But I think we're all in agreement now. Um, and I say we're all in agreement now. I'm in agreement now that he's picked up form. He's definitely picked up form. And, and my criticisms earlier this season, I still stand by them because I think they're justified now. You're seeing Havertz in, in better light. I think he's become a lot more effective all round. I think he's he's having a, a much bigger impact. I actually think this this game in particular was his poorest of the last three overall. I think his last two were better performances overall. But in this one, you get the winner in the in that fashion, then that kind of makes up for it. So but I, I know, Jordan, you wanted to touch in on Havertz as well. So Yeah, just briefly, because I think it's, we should have a sensible discussion about Kai Havertz that doesn't lean towards the end of he's overrated and why have we got him and he's not contributing, but also doesn't go on the other end of the spectrum where it's like we overinflate how good he's really playing. I think he's clearly contributing to the team, right? He's clearly mm -hmm. making a difference, making an impact. He's clearly up doing what I, and I definitely know you touch have been asking for, which is performances. It's ironic that he's got another winner against Brentford because the winner he got against Brentford last time at Brentford, I think you guys said that his cameo when he came on, he, had, he performed well. I didn't think he did. I didn't think it was a brilliant 30, 25 minutes. He scored the winner, but I don't think he played well. I think he did play well on the weekend and got the winner. This is the Kai Havertz that I wanted to see 5, 10, 15 games ago. And, I, I, and I'm watching play and I can see it's not just aggression. It's not just off the ball runs he's making. He's taking shots with a bit more conviction now. He feels like the team are looking for him now. He's not just mm. the 11th player. The team are looking for him. Um, and I think that says that, okay, we now feel you're part of this team. So I just wanted to have a, just to mention briefly that I just think this is the Kai Havertz that I think you've been wanting to see Turkish. And as you said before, if people were giving him eights two, three months ago, well, then you must be giving him 12 out of 10 now because... That's my logic. <laughs> Right, let me not get into that all that. This is the Kai Havertz that I think we wanted to see, you know, two, three, four months ago. And we're getting it now. The question finally for me is, what does next season look like with Kai Havertz in the squad? Because if we buy a striker, we're not going to sell Jesus. Where does Kai Havertz fit into this team? I mean, that's next season's problem. But I'm, I'm looking at, he's playing well, but in our strongest team, does Kai Havertz play in that team? Still, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I don't know. There's something, um, I was going to use the word cold, and I think some people think I'm going too far with it, but it's not just on Kai Havertz. I, I was having a good chat with my dad today about this Arsenal team, and there's something a bit more cold about them. Now, look, you've got to get over the line for us to say that there's a real mentality shift. And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to do that thing where you bring other players down to push other players up. Because, for example, I thought Jesus' cameo was really good. But, there's something about kind of Kivior left back, Rice in midfield and Havertz up front that that's a little bit more, they give less away. I don't know how to explain it. Xhaka, yeah. Zinchenko and Jesus were chaotic and stuck in and brilliant and lifting. And there was so much energy they fueled this team with. And we're going to need that too. There is that element we're absolutely going to need as well as their brilliant technique and what they can offer in their own way. But Havertz, when he celebrated that goal, listen, with all the stick, if I were him, with all the stick I received, I'd have been delirious. But there was still something quite cool about his celebration. Like There was something quite just like knee slide, yes, I'm happy, and up I get. I don't know how to explain it. There's something quite self-aware that I like about him. Like... You've all been slagging it, but I'm, you know, one nil, uh, two one. There's your winner. And yeah, we've won it late, but there's more to come. And listen, maybe I'm reading way too much into body language or whatever. But even Kivio, doesn't he come across as quite a calm figure? Like he's just quite, mm -hmm. we've got a job to do. You need me to overlap. You need me to whatever. We've got a job to do. Declan Rice as well. Since the day he's arrived, six, eight, wherever you need me, I'll do it. And again, it's not to take from other Really good players I rate who have a big part and have had a big part to play in our team. But when it got to the latter stages of that game, I was very nervous. I can't hide it. Anyone who's watching mm. the watch along knows I was a bag of nerves. But Arsenal didn't look like... That goal is a really good goal. It's a really good, well-worked goal. It wasn't just smashing it into the box, waiting for something to drop for someone. They settled. They, they calmly just played their football. They tried to engineer the right moment. 
And then Havertz in front of goal, bam, let me just get power behind it and it will go in the back of the net. And that's what I mean by cold. And I wonder if you guys know what I'm talking about. Some people are agreeing in the comments, which is nice, but I don't know if some of you guys know what I mean by there's a level of composure and there's a job to do. Professionalism about this team that we perhaps didn't have last season. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I give Arteta a hell of a lot of credit for that because early part of the season, I was weary about the change it it, it produced in terms of our transition, our fluidity, our attack and, and the goals we're scoring. But it's all clicked in together. That was that was the that was the questions I was asking. You know, can he bring what we had back last season into what he's doing now? And he's done that. And even on Kai, I've got to give credit. Listen, I've, I've given Kai his credit. Yeah, I hope people have heard that now because people think I don't give the guy credit. But I'm going to give Arteta credit as well because let's not forget Arteta said he's coming in as a midfielder. Let's not forget that. So Arteta, you know, at, at some point decided, nah, it's time to you know rethink my strategy as well. Maybe it was a Jesus injury. Maybe it was Havertz's performances in midfield. And through one reason or another, he decided to change what he thought Havertz would be. And now Jesus is back. Havertz is keeping his place up top. And I'm not arguing against it. But what I'm saying is Arteta does deserve credit for looking at that and, and making a change and making a change that I think has benefited, has benefited us. Well, I, I say I think it, it most definitely has benefited us. Just before Lee comes in, sorry, let's not forget that many of us were saying that Arteta's premiership at the club would be defined on Havertz working or not. Many of us were like literally saying if this Kai Havertz thing doesn't go doesn't go well, mm -hmm. he could he he could it could be his job on the line. So I think but you're right to kind of flag a, a lot of credit for Arteta as well. So um, yeah, I, I think if, if this goes where we think we, we think it's going to go, I think Arteta's in line for 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 a lot of credit. Yeah, and 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 it wasn't just. Look, I've, I sort of talked on his personality and his mentality there a little bit, Kai Havertz, which we're going to learn more about in these next few months. But also there was, um, I'm with you. I didn't think he was having a great game. I thought he was having a good game. I, I, I didn't, I thought he was better in the Newcastle one. I thought he was better in the Sheffield United yeah, one, yeah, yeah. Um, where I thought he was great in those. And I thought he was good slash very good. I like that in the last 20 minutes, and not a lot of it was coming off. It felt like he wanted the ball. That was good to see. He's the one who was, in the penalty area, pinning someone, say, give it to me, and I'm going to ping it off into Kivio to whip into the box. Yeah. And then he was the one who's popping right and popping left, trying to get into areas. And then when he scores that goal, and this is where the people who talked about his movement, credit here, because he should have scored the chance that Jorginho played him in behind. Great Shocking move. miss. Should have scored. Well. Shocking <laughs> miss. <laughs> yeah, so the it, it, miss. He should have scored. This is the yeah. problem. He, the touch was perfect. And then the finish mm. was just, ah, oh, well, yeah. I hear right. all that. But then... The ball comes into the box and he's not just rushing in. He's the one holding back a little bit. The defend and he looks like he's got acres of space when he eventually goes to head it because the defenders have been drawn to the ball. And that's where he's shown a little bit of football IQ. So huge credit to Kai Hart. Like I'm in previous games, he's had a moment, but otherwise he's just been a really good part of the team. But this time he had a he had a big moment. And I know he's had one or two already, but that's his biggest in an Arsenal shirt. I'm really happy for him. Lee sitting there like I'm not gonna talk. I told you a lot of weeks ago. I like him. No, no, no and, and I'm, I'm, I'm just listening to you. You know, I thought he was again. I thought he was one of our best players yesterday. I don't know where. Why, oh, he didn't have a good game. I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm watching something different. I said, didn't he? Have, he didn't have a great game. Did he have a great game? Well, no, who did? That's fine. That, that's fine. I'm just saying. I didn't, <laughs> it doesn't no, negate no, my I, point. I just I said he didn't have a great there, game up there for. Well, I, I thought he played well yesterday. I thought like him and Ben were the best players. I um, said he played well. You no, know, well, well, he didn't, didn't have a great game, is what you just said. He did. Can someone help me? He didn't have <laughs> a great he game. Have a great game. I wouldn't give him, I wouldn't give no, him a no, nine you or well. you don't, you don't, you, You've not had a bad game, have you, if you, if you played well? Yes, I agree. I just think I, th th I, I think there were three better Arsenal players than him. I'd say that. I, so therefore, you know, if, if you're not in the top no, three, no. Rice... Ben White. Saliba, Gabriel White, Saliba. all better. Erdegaard first half was better. But, but, but Lee, you're right. He was good. I'm not saying he wasn't good. No, I said but... he was good. I, I, said, yeah. he, I said he was and... good. The, the, the point is, my, the, my reason for highlighting he wasn't great was I'm trying to speak fairly on the guy and say that it was a fantastic moment. And in other games, I think he has been great. This time, a little bit less in it. But he rose to it in the last 10, 20 minutes. He wanted the ball and he popped up with a big moment. Yeah, That's all right. It's all credit. 
through for most of our best play, he, he was he, he was involved in it. Like you know, that's that's how I see it. Like you know, I have to look back at it again because um, obviously he didn't play well. But um, you know, uh... <laughs> but I, I, no, I, I do. Like, listen, he could have got sent off. I think that you know, it, I, I, it, but what he, I like he, is, he should have been sent off. Well, no, you know, it could have been. No, could've I disagree been. with that. No, no, never no, a first I yellow. He dived. I don't think he dived. No, he did. Ooh, we, we he definitely died. Died. No, I like it <laughs> But it wasn't a yellow. The first yellow it wasn't, wasn't a yellow. Blatant dive. He, he, but he, he just does all those little dark arts. Just, just, just right. You know what I mean? Like the elbow is a good elbow, but it's not a sending off elbow. You know what I mean? Like he's very, very clever at what he does. And I, um, I, I, I think that he's brought brought on through the playing for Chelsea and the dark arts and things like that, and he's brought a little bit of it to Arsenal. But I, I think that you know. Um, I, I thought that, like, you know, I'm going to say it there. Declan Rice was, you know, he just he just does everything good. But what what I, what I like about Declan Rice, which is different to 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 Havertz, is that I look at Havertz and I think, yeah, you've won the European Cup, you've won trophies, so you know how to play in these big games and those big moments. And like, someone like Declan Rice has only been, I know he's played internationally, but club level, he hasn't got that experience. And but he's showing that he's like a proper leader and looks like he's been there for a, for a long, long time as well. I, I felt that, um, you know, I, I, I just, I, I, I'm just enjoying watching him play. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna. Uh, how can I say it? Like you know, I, 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 I like Kai Havertz, right? And I have done. I don't know what it is, but they're saying about. I can't put my finger on it why I do like him, but. He's, he's up there as one of my favourite players. And I, I don't know what it is. I think it is because he's, he's got that little nasty streak in him. I like that in a player. I think that's why I really like Ben White. You know, like he's another one that does it. Like, you know, I, If you watch Ben White, how many times did you see him yesterday have a go at, at Tony and have little, little, little snide remarks going in his ear and all that? Like, I love yeah, all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. I love all that sort of stuff. I, you know what I mean? Winding up the opposition... Getting them to go off their game and all that, like you know, and I, I'll tell you what I, I like about Kai Havertz. And you go, go back to the uh, um, the penalty incident, or that like, could have been sent off. All the all the Brentford players are going. He doesn't get involved. He doesn't engage with it. He doesn't engage with it like and make it even worse or whatever. He just walks about, you know. All right, okay, uh, he, he, he he hits someone with a. With a, I don't think it was a foul or anything like that, but he bashed someone and they was laying on the floor. He don't he don't go and see if they're all right. He just walks past them. There's just things oh, I like about him. I'm sorry, like no, I, I get it. That's I guess what I was trying to suggest earlier that like there's a sort of um, even in the Sky Sports interview after he was asked, you know, oh, so what's your best position? And he went, I've been asked this so many times. Like I'll just I'll play where I'm asked, and I I love that answer. Do you know how many times I heard Theo Walcott go, I'm a striker, I'm a striker, I'm a striker. He got a run up front and he went, I think I'm a right winger. I was like, what? <laughs> like, I remember like, that, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> from the way, from the way. Like, Kai Havertz is just like, I'll play what I'll just play what I'll do what I'm asked to do. And I think that's part of it, Lee. I think there's a personality we're starting to understand um, yeah. that I do like about him. I think also as well, he's, he's got a knack of scoring big goals. Look at his career. He's got a knack of scoring really big goals. If you look at his time at Chelsea, uh, even with Germany, a couple of big uh, qualifying goals, I think, a few years back, and, and Arsenal already, he's got he does have a knack of not scoring many goals, but he does in, in big games, big moments, he does score. So I'm hoping that there's a that continues between now and May. And also that goal, which you have to take into consideration, he scored not playing up front. He, he'd gone back into the sort of midfield role then by then, if I remember right. He's just, he's gone up front. And he'd he'd come in from a so a little bit more later on to get into the box or whatever as James said like you know I do, do you know what you know people keep going on about oh we should have bought this player now I I do think that we had bought him also for that versatility like you know where he can play in different positions I do think that he can do that you know um, I don't know if he can play left back you know I know he's played for it in Germany but like. I, I just think that he can do a few few positions, and I, you know, I've, I, I thought he he done okay yesterday, and it's good to see. And do you know what? I'm going to be really honest. When people go at me, do you, do you know when you you see a few people when you walk in through the stadium, they go, I don't know, I don't know if you get this, but they, they I always get people go up. So, what do you think the score's going to be today, Lee? So I go three nil, two nil, 
two one or whatever. Who's going to score? Kai Everts. So I always say you know, <laughs> that way, like. So because I want him to score all the time, and there you go. That's that's how I feel like. You know? How do you feel about Ramsdale? Sorry. Mm. I love Ramsdale. If it weren't for him, we don't win that game yesterday. Those two wonder saves. <laughs> if it wasn't, move on. I'm not biting. I'm not biting because I've got some things to say, people. Let's move on. I'll tell you what. Look, let me. Let me. Go you on. know, I'm going to say. You know, gutted for him. Gutted. Uh, you know, because you cannot make a mistake like that in a game like that. You just want to just go through a game where it's going. It. it He'd thrown out a ball to um, Trossard. If it was to Martinelli, it's a goal and everybody would be going mad about it because Trossard hasn't got the pace. Yeah, he, yeah, was doing, yeah. he was doing really well. But I have to say, I was always nervous when he had the ball at his feet. I don't know if you all felt the same. Like, I don't yeah, know if that's yeah. because I'm a Ramsdale lover or that was how it was. That's just how I felt. And when it happened, I just thought, oh, no. But... I don't care what anybody says, and Aaron will say the same. Don't matter if he'd have made 10 saves in that game, you don't redeem yourself. You don't, you know what I mean? It'll always be that that mistake, you know. Uh, I thought uh, it was a sensational effort from Tony. I've got to say that, like, you know what I mean? But it's an yeah, unbelievable yeah. save, unbelievable save. Yeah, and, yeah. He, and he made a very, very good save where, you know, you've got a centre-half when you're 1-1, free header from five, five six yards out. Probably should bury it, but he don't, and, and, and he makes a good save. But you're always going to go back. <clears throat> we was one nil up when that happened, and um, listen, I think like my, my mate Mark said it as, as a great thing is that uh, uh, Ramsdale's not in there to make those saves that that Raya does because we don't get those pe- people don't shoot that much against us no more. It, it is there for the for the f- for playing on the floor and all that and. I, I think that you know Ramsdale is not at the level of, of Raya from 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 kicking shot stopping. I think that I, I, I'm going to say it now. I don't think Raya saves that one from Tony. I don't I, I, because he's that little bit bigger and, and gets the save. But you I'm know, right. and, I, and I don't know if you felt this as well. I don't. And I've had a little with a watch of it, like you know Tony, and uh, you know causes a few problems and all that. But I do think that there was a little bit of jittery nerves because Raya wasn't there as well. I don't know if that was something to do because I didn't think we was as sure as the, at the back as we, we, we have been. I don't think that was all down to Tony. Yeah. No, go on, Jordan. Go on. Can, can I, I, ask, I was going to ask all three of you a question because this was the talk after the, after the game amongst a lot of my friends. How much do you guys attribute that Ramsdale error to Mikel Arteta and how percentage wise and how much do you attribute to just him just not doing his job properly? I split it 100-0 to Ramsdale. Turkish? Probably 90-10, and the 10 is only because Arteta probably should have sorted this out earlier because Ramsdale's value has gone... What's the opposite of through the roof, through the ground? Are you talking about the error? Sorry, are you talking about the error in the game or are you talking about his situation? No, no, well, the error, but because a lot of people were saying to me, they think that Rams, the situation that Arteta has created has caused Ramsdale to just lose all confidence and be a nervous wreck. Come in for one game. You know it's only one game. You know the team's on fire and you're the goalkeeper. So how much is that environment that Arteta has created? That Because I, I don't like the, the rhetoric around Ramsdale being not a good kicker. Because the year last season, his distribution was brilliant. Ram, Raya might be arguably slightly better, but Raya, Ramsdale's kicking was brilliant. So this idea that Ramsdale was never a good kicker is, is, is nonsense. But... How much it's do you think Arteta's? It's more the pace that he works at. I think. I, 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 I think at the end of the day, I, I said this on my fan cam. When Thomas Party come on and give the white ball away three times, everybody turns around and says, "Oh, because he's rusty." You know what I mean? Like you have to, you know. His last Premier League game was against Brentford, wherever long ago it was. His last game for Arsenal properly was the FA Cup game. He done okay in that game. For me. You can put a little bit of that onto it and all that, like. But I, I've watched it a few times, and I, and I'm going to be really honest, guys. I've tried. I, I've looked at it like you know, like I'm the solicitor for the Yorkshire Ripper, like you know, what I mean, trying to find out a, a, a solution to try and you know, but, you know, trying to find an excuse for him. Yeah, uh, yeah, trying to make, trying to you know, you know, you, when you when you're a solicitor, you know, you you you're. Uh, 
defending a mass murder and you're just trying, you know, to try and do something, you know what I mean, to, to get him off. Sheroy during the... the Shiroi, you know what I mean? Like, Shiroi trying to defend hey. Turkish, you know what I mean? Like, you know... So <laughs> I'm desperate. Two I'm, minutes I'm ago, I'm he desperate. didn't want to talk about him. Now he's now he's saying mass murderers and trials and lawyers. Right, no, but you know what? From that, from that, I've, I, I, I thought, you know, well, Gabriel shouldn't have play, <laughs> Gabriel shouldn't have played to, played it to him. Gabriel should yeah. have just there was no one on. <laughs> no, no. We should have closed him yeah, down. Saliva, yeah. saliva, you know what? But I've looked at it. I've, I've you know, he's guilty. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's nothing I can say that can he's, 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 he's Turkish he's Turkish yeah, he's, 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 Turkish. Turkish. he's, he's just kind of hey, Turkish that's defamation I'll take you to the next one you can, have you can even say he's a little bit rusty it weren't it was just he just takes his time on it like you, you can't def- it, it's all on Ramsdale that, that, that Lee thing. big up to you I've got major respect for you because we all know you love same, the guy same same but, yeah you're spot on. You're absolutely spot on because I did the same thing. I, I took a minute. I took a minute on the watch long. You can all watch it back. The goal goes in. I don't say anything. I look stern. I've actually got a, in fact, I'm going to show you right now because it, it's going with my um, comment of the week. <laughs> that, that's my reaction. The disgust <laughs> and friendly Bane says Harry Potter is not happy with Ramsdale, who's considering <laughs> using a ton of cadaver on it. But that's my comment of the week in early. So I was disgusted by it, genuinely. I watched it. Sorry, I got rid of the overlay. So I saw it, and my first thought was, okay, James, take a second here, take a second. We know that, that our goalkeepers are asked to take risks. We know he's just come back. <clears throat> Maybe the options weren't on. And then I watched it, and you see him on the watch, and I just go, that was shit because there's no excuse and it's not just the error errors can happen or whatever to do it just before half time in a in a half where once again Brentford they did get near our penalty error I agree we didn't look quite as comfortable but they still didn't ask any questions to do that just before then was a joke and I was I was so angry but again mistakes happen and big up to all the players who went and picked him up Jorginho Gabriel and then Saliba said all the right things at full time when he talked about we're a team I made mistakes in the last few months and whatever so big up to all that cool but then this is where and I love the guy Ramsdale I actually think for two years he was good for us he made errors but he was very good for us top personality and there's a lot I really like about the guy but I just gotta I've got to call it as it as it is when we then go 2-1 up and he's doing this to the Brentford fans, I get no. it. They were giving David Wright, they were giving the whole David Wright, blah, blah, blah. But come on, have just have some self-awareness, please. Yeah, like, agree. That was an awful moment. There was no excuse for it. And you're doing this. And remember what I was talking about, being cold. Remember what I was talking about, the, the calmness and whatever. David Wright is not doing that. If he's, or whenever. Like, and I just feel like that might be the difference. That just that level of just <clears throat> I've got a job to do might be what makes Ryan the better keeper. And that's probably more. But I just and I'm saying this from a position of I've got so much appreciation for what Ramsdale's done for us. But I've really sat on this and thought, how much do I really want to go in on this? He made a mistake, but we won. But I've just got to say as it is, it was really poor. It was really poor. And I, I didn't like what I saw, if I'm honest. I've got three quick points because you're bang on, James. First point to when the timing of it, there was a 43rd, 45th minute, whenever it was. I watched the Man City Liverpool game today. On the 43rd, 45th minute, what happens? Liverpool are going through. Rodri takes a guy out, takes a yellow. Why? Because he knows that there's a time and a place for game management. Two minutes before half time, he's saying, no, 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 you're not equalizing. I'll take a yellow. So to your point about game management, the timing of it, I'm with. Second point, and again, James and Lee, you'll appreciate this. Big up my boy Simeon, who watches the show. His, the, his argument was, comparing, comparing to tennis, he was saying you have errors and then you have unforced errors or for, forced errors, forced errors. He's saying that that was, an, was a forced error. Which is Un- why unforced. You mean sorry, unforced. Unforced, yeah. unforced yeah. It didn't need to happen, yeah. It didn't need to happen. And I was saying to him, I'm with you guys. I, I think it's 90% on Ramsdale. But the argument I'm hearing from my friends was that actually the, the player closing him down, the circumstances that slightly mitigate against it. And the third thing is, do you remember the interview that Aaron Ramsdale did with Ian Wright on that, that content he did where he said, I have issues concentrating for 90 minutes? Mm. To your Again, to your point, James, do you think this is what he was talking about? And more importantly, is this what is this what Arteta 
spotted as to why he brought in David Rea. We talked about um, when Zinchenko said to Ian, uh, to Rio Ferdinand, I need to work on my defending. And Ramsdale was very open about, I lose concentration. And Jesus said in an interview, yeah, I, goals isn't the best thing I bring, or I bring more than just goals, whatever it was. Mm. And the thing is, on a level, I admire the total honesty because there's a, there's, a, there's a recognition of their strengths and weaknesses. And I think that's good. And I think players can admit they're not perfect. But on the other hand, we're chasing a title. I don't need three of our starting players going around saying, I'm not that great at that and I could be better at that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, And so there's kind of that balance and there's that middle ground. And I think that is a part of it. Yeah, I do. The last thing, this is the last thing I'll say on it. I really love Turkish thoughts on this as well. The last thing I'll say is he did make two great saves, really great saves. Mm. And I think in 90 minutes, you got the best and worst of Ramsdale. The distribution that could have led to a goal, the error that made it 1-1 in a pressure situation, lack of concentration, two big saves as well. And then at the end, the kind of the thing to the fans, I'm, I'm, I don't know if it's what we need, but in 90 minutes, you've got Rams out his best and worst. And thank you for everything. Because I genuinely have really appreciated him over the two years. I will say this. Yeah. I will say this. You need a little bit of luck in football. All right? A little, little bit of luck. And, and like, you know, sometimes you hit them and it goes out wide. Like it did for Raya against Manchester City because he done exactly the same thing. But his one went the other side of the post. Spot on. You know? Right. So it does happen. But you need that little bit of luck. And I also think, and I'm, I'm not blaming Arteta for this or anything like that, because I've just said it's all on Ramsdale. I think Brentford targeted it. I think that they looked and go, look, he's going to be nervous. We we chase down things and all that, like you know. And 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 I think that that's what what happened on that that situation. Um, and, and and yeah, that's my my thoughts on it. Like you know, it, I, listen, you know, I, I took me go, I took me Aaron Ramsdale goalkeeping shirt for, off at half time. I was I was livid. I was absolutely livid with it. Like you know what I mean. Um, but um, my signs, yeah, <laughs> for like, you know, <laughs> no, no, I'm just joking, like, I, like you know, but listen, I, I, I have to say that half time, I, I don't know how, how you was feeling in the studio or whatever, like, or in the boxes or whatever, it, it, was, it was a low because of what happened, but then half time, like, let's, let's hope that the boys get him out of it, like, you know what I mean, and they did that at the end, the end yeah. of it all, like. You know they got it. They got him out of the hell because I. You imagine if that would have stayed one-one, I. I he, he would have been suffering like you know, and 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 we know that um, uh, Cecil see him yesterday, um, and, and he just said, oh, I didn't need that. You know what I mean, like you know. So he he, he was feeling it. No, of course, of course he is, and I understand all the. You've not played in ages. It must have been a real kick. We were all saying that we didn't need to replace our goalkeeper in the summer, and mm. then we did. So that must have been really difficult. And and, and I totally get all that. I just it it's it's the mistake was annoying on a level, and then the this to the fans, which I get has always been a part of his brand or what he does. That just kind of pushed me over the edge to a point where I was like, "Come on, really?" And it's why. But you know, like I said, I, I genuinely am grateful for two years of being a very good player for Arsenal yeah. and actually having some personality and giving us some balls back in the team being up for the big games like Tottenham away and and Villa and Liverpool and others like so I've got so much credit for Aaron Ramsdale I do but I think yesterday Rye will probably make a mistake in future and people will throw that at me but I think yesterday I was like ah oh, god I get it like I, I think I get it well that um, links to two discussions we've had sorry James there about mm -hmm. Ramsdale and going back to Kai Havertz because that could have effectively, not effectively, but that could have possibly ended our title charge. Because if we draw that game 1-1 one, one, and then City or Liverpool win today, we're having a very different podcast here. So Kai Havertz's goal was huge because yeah. as, as, how, as things have transpired, we won the game and today's game was a draw. So Ramsdale could have cost us a title. That might be a stretch, but he could have definitely passed on the, on the back foot. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's, he's, he's had a part to play in one of those already at the end of last season but um i don't know james you said you want to get my thoughts i don't really know like i was yeah you lot spoke for 10 15 minutes because i'm done with him I ain't really got my no head. fair we, we don't need you're right we don't need to go on and on i just yeah you're right fair enough i, I just want mean... to know what we i guess what i want to know is in a in a line where you like Oh, mistakes happen, or were you like that is unacceptable? You think my son's first game when he done that? I said, me, you know me. I said mistakes happen, bro. I was disrespectfully done with him at that point. I was, I was thinking if we don't win this match, 
then I'm going to ask Lee to speak to his dad about it because I don't know what's <laughs> going on over there. They need to sort it out. But we, we, we needed to win that game anyway, but like it was much, it was just, you know, please win it for Aaron as well. That's how I was feeling like, you know what I mean? Because, yeah, because now I'm respect, like when I say I'm done with it, like I don't, I don't, I'm just blunt. Respectfully, I'm done with it. We've got the three points. Like it's his last game. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. We've improved in that position. We can, can, we can see why now. We can see how he's how how Arteta and Ray have improved that position. It is what it is. It would have been a sour end to oh. what was the majority well, a positive transfer, in my opinion. But yeah, one, one thing one thing I do want to say about it, and uh, you know, um, and it's a way, way from it all. Like Liverpool and Man City played today and finished the game with both their reserve team goalkeepers. So the, that that position. Mm, good point. Good point. Is, is an important position, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, I don't know how we're going to go about that next season. Do you can get, but at the end of the day, you, you, you're playing in a massive game there today, and both um, both the number one goalkeepers not playing. So it's a big big thing. What's going to happen in the happen in the summer? Because I don't think we can go like we are with this situation. But when I looked at the two goalkeepers today, they were very very good. Very, very good. But, but Lee, so, you say we can't carry on like this, but sorry to cut you, but why not? Would, would, is there any any chance at all that we could have Ramsdale or even communications where Arteta says, look, I want to keep both of you guys. Raise my number one. Raise my number still, one. You still want but Ramsdale. You still want that? I don't want that. Well, you... Ram, Ramsdale, still, as, as Ramsdale's number two. Oh, I'm, he's still I'm, licking his wounds out there. That we're, we're eight months is, into is the season. This was, this was a massive, you know, chance for you to just stay refocused for 90 minutes, do your thing. Because he's right in the second half, he made two great saves. But, you know, the, that performance will be, you know, that 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 mistake defines the whole performance. I just think... But I, he, but I think he's also right. Unfortunately, it does. Turkish is right. Unfortunately, it does. That's, that's the I nature think... of the beast. I think it probably does as well, but your point is also valid in that getting good number twos is hard. <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah, getting, yeah, and you might need a good point. number two. So I'm just thinking... Respect any... Matt Turner, please. Oh, jeez. Anyway, let's well, well, let's let's we're let's actually talking about it. that. Matt, he's gone to, to be number two at Arsenal to number two at Nottingham Forest. <laughs> yeah, that was just a Cronkay America special. Like that was, That's what that was. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. You know what I'm talking about, like a trusty one. It was, it was one of those. Do you see trusty the other? Oh my god! Um, Got yeah. four Big Macs and a cheeseburger for him, like, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> so <there we> go. <laughs> Bro, we've had some shockers there, Ronison. Let's not forget about that. But listen, no, 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 we have had a shocker. That's going to be very, very. It's going to be interesting what I do because the recruitment on the goalkeeping situation has not been great. No, and I'll see no. those two goalkeepers today, and. You know, like I think, oh, Edison's out for a while, and the other goalkeeper comes in and look decent. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and Liverpool goalkeeper, you wouldn't, you, you, they're not missing Edison. I mean, who's it's probably also, the best goalkeeper? It's also a reminder this might not be the last time we see Ramsdale. So, yeah, yeah. anything can happen. Exactly, now. Like, happen. You know, so, so, Aaron, you know, if, we, if, if he's needed again. Play it, you know. Well, you're a very good goalkeeper. Show it. Yeah, I'd like to see him stay as a number two, like you know, you know, you're number two, and but it's going to be difficult, isn't it? When you're probably he too won't. Good he's too good. Number. No, I don't want. I, I actually don't even want that. I'm with Turkish. I don't. I don't want yeah, all this I again. Too, he's too good, good enough to be a number, number one. Go be a number one for a side playing in Europe. He's good enough for that. Yeah. Easily, hundred yeah. percent. Keep him. <laughs> uh, back, back, back to back to a. <laughs> Well, I was, I was going to say somewhat positive, but back to a very big positive. And we've spoken about Ben White recently in, in the last few weeks, few shows. Um, and he's probably pulled out his best performance of the season overall, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. I'd probably say overall the best performance of the season. Um, man of the match, two assists. Looking very good. Like I said, he doesn't get his flowers, Ben White, man. And I, I don't really mind it much, go under the radar, but he is quality. Yeah, Jordan, I'd like to get. I forget your opinion on Ben White because you're you're quite a harsh. I'm, yeah, I'm. I don't think I'm quite in the Ben White fan club in the way that Lee and James are. But That's yesterday, Jack loves him. Oh, I, oh, sorry, all three of you, all oh, three yeah. of you, all three, Okay, all yeah, three of you. He did, yeah. But yesterday, best player on the pitch. <clears throat> best player on the pitch. Um, he, he. I thought he helped out with Tony. Um. And and as Lee mentioned, um, did a really good job in helping out on Ivan Tony. He was a handful, by the way. He's a real one thing about Tony I like, slight segue, uh, slight aside, 
even if Tony's not getting shots off or, or scoring goals, he's always a handful. He's always occupying defenders. And I like that. Um, but not just not just helping out, getting forward, I thought he was a threat. I thought his inverting was absolutely perfection yesterday. I thought the way he was coming inside, I thought the way he was helping with Odegaard and Saka on that side um was just was just seamless. <clears throat> And I guess when you've got Kivio at left back, who's not inverted, just playing the role of a left back, Ben White has the intelligence, I think, to basically take take that role on. Two assists. Um, and then yeah, Zinchenko, this... Zinchenko comes and he starts overlapping. One of his, his assists come from that. Sorry, say that again. And, and then Zinchenko comes and he starts. Is, 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 what time does Zinni come on? Um, well, that's 10 minutes from the end, didn't he? Yeah, it's 10 minutes. Late, yeah. Oh, and then Ben yeah. White became the traditional right back, let's right, say. Right back, like, yeah. He's, he's 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 really smart. We've 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 got four or five players that are really intelligent. I think Havertz is one, but Ben White is a very intelligent player. He's not just a good right back. He actually knows about football. I can see that he knows ball. So yeah, I mean, he's not one of my top three Arsenal players. Um, but yes, they best player on the pitch. Hundred um, percent. We've got twenty four super chats. So I'm going to keep it moving because I've just clocked that we're fifty one minutes in. We've still got. Uh, a big game against Porto to talk about. We've still got predictions to make and comments of the day to get through. You know what it is. It's still the same show. People just live with this Super Chat segment added in. If any Super Chats come after, then I'll get them at the end of the show. But let me get the ones that have come in already. Baldo's asking when I'll be buying a Kai shirt for my son. Um, there's a few players I'll be putting before getting a Kai shirt. I can't <laughs> like. And that's, the, that, that's, you know, that's nothing against Kai. I just, you know, Rice, Saka, um, even Ben White. There was a comment that came in, and I thought, well, now we're in a flow of a conversation, so I'll, I'll maybe bring it up later. Yeah. Are you comfortable revealing his birthday? Just, I just thought, yeah, like the, the date. Ah, shit! Oh dear, it's mad, on? isn't it? It's mad. Twenty-eight for the first. Twenty-eight plus one is twenty-nine. Oh, <laughs> oh no! I don't like this. No, this is like <laughs> no, nah, that's quality. There, that's quality. <laughs> Don't fight it, Turkish. Don't fight Don't it. Don't fight it. It's, it's no. written in the stars. <laughs> now that. That is not. That's nothing. That's nothing. Um, <laughs> it would have been better if he was born on the 29th. It would. It would, yeah. <laughs> ah, this is perfect. <laughs> People are saying, ain't no way. Ain't no way, indeed. <laughs> Will says, so thrilled to be catching this live. I think we need to talk about Chelsea ruining young, talented players. I'll stay believing in Kai even when his form drops. I love you guys. Come on, Will. Love for the love. Um, and we, we we gave Kai the biggest segment of the show so far. Forget Chelsea. He must be loving life at Arsenal after that Chelsea. Surely he is. Surely. Well, he said he is. Surely. He said he is. Um, can we drop four points and still win the league? I'd say yes is the answer yep. to that. I don't know what everyone else thinks. Yep. Lee says yeah. Yep. James thinking. Jordan. Expression. I, I ain't going to win every game, guys. We're not going to win the next ten games. You know that no, that be yeah. what, that would be eighteen games on the spin. That'd be some sort of record, wouldn't it? I don't yeah, think yeah. Anything yeah. Can win eighteen games. Can we up. drop four? I don't know. Who's going to win the league, yeah. everyone? It's it, the in, longest in, run in the Premier League for for yeah, it, it, City with like fifteen or sixteen yeah. or something. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, I mean that is a it's a big ask. It's a big ask. Eighteen is the record. Thank you. Is that sorry, right? to... done. Sorry, I was going to ask you guys. I mean, we're top of the league now, albeit it could be temporary. But it feels like a good time to kind of just ask you guys. I mean, we should do it every right. week. Not a good who time. do you think? Who do you... Okay, first of April would be a good time. Okay. All right. Uh, we're in the super super chat segment at this moment in time to uh, uh, Jordan. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that sorry? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> and he's acting surprised that hey, you're not here with us, or what's going on? No, my, my internet know. ran out a second ago. Oh, ran out. My, oh. my internet cut a second ago. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Okay, no more. Cesar says, which current Arsenal player skill set would you most like to have? Big up, gents. By far my Ooh. favorite podcast. George villain role. Well, the villain role. <laughs> you I see what um, Lee said. Older God. Skill set. Gabby Jesus. Yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, mm. Jorginho, intellect, mm. yeah, uh, vision. Say no Lovely. more. He was great again, by the way. Two, two most cutting passes. I'll stick with Odegaard. I thought you know some of his 
some of his skills are good yeah um davel says big fan of the show atmosphere yesterday was electric hoping for the same against porto on tuesday night it's a must ibi said just got back from masjid realized that i'll be missing the full match on tuesday here's hoping when i check my phone in 48 hours it's a win big up lads fingers as you watching griselda yeah, you're a disgrace. You're a disgrace. <laughs> Absolute disgrace. Oh, the, man said, <laughs> if you're not watching it live, you know. Yeah, really you ain't no fan. How do you know if he was wasn't one of the people back in even the comment section, Jordan? And it's you true, just it's heard, true. It's true. You know, you true. need to think about it wisely. Real well, I'm James. Not I'm Real James says, there's hey, no, boys. Yeah, there's not many back in me, are there, Lee? So <laughs> the one who he, who is, he slagged him <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> Um, real JM. Hey, sure he sure I see Sheroy was in the chat earlier. I don't oh, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's yeah. he doing on the chat? Get in the show, my friend. Yeah, get him on. Get him on. Get him on. Since he became your lawyer, he's just gone on. He's been and, and all that. <laughs> he disappeared a lot. I ain't seen a lot of him. <laughs> you've killed, seen a you've lot killed of his before. reputation. That's why. Send him a last minute link. Get the people what they want. Okay. Get Sheroy in. Drop drop Jordan out for the last twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a high. Give the people what they want. I said, drop Jordan out for twenty minutes. Oh nah. Uh, and people think you're the nice guy, James. James, James, James is brutal. It's <laughs> frantically. Um, I love you, Jordan. I love you. Love you. <laughs> Real James says, "Hey boys, sorry if not allowed on here, but coming to London for the first time in August and dying to see the Gunners. What are my genuine chances of copping a few tickets? Is it that difficult? Firstly, the season starts mid-August, I believe. Weekend. Is it that much chance of Jordan watching a live game? <laughs> there you go. Right, yeah. Yeah. Well, tickets yeah. at this moment in time." Are right. incredibly difficult. But in, in August, he might have luck because it's the beginning of the season. He might have, but then yeah, again, it might be another day. I'm saying, like, yeah, it's probably the best time to get him. And yeah. Emirates Cup. Yeah. I mean, if you want to, if you if you if you want to get the Emirates, ex if you want to get the Emirates experience, <laughs> um, why, don't get, why don't you get that box he was having at football like? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Talking stand about, your, oh, stand on your light. Stand on your light. Talking about um James and his box. Here's Elisa. Remember, I mentioned earlier that Elisa um hooked me and my son up with tickets. This is him right here. So big up Elisa once again. He says, put some respect on King Kai's name. Directly responsible for six points this season, City and two and uh, both matches against Brentford. The squad is developed enough now where, where we can be fluid in tactics and the roles the players take. He's provided tangible returns in his first season. Well, yeah. if I, yeah. can, if can I, I come to your box? box him, I'll totally agree with him. No, I don't know what's yeah. going on. Like, you know, what I mean? <laughs> yeah. he got the wrong person in his box, didn't he? Like, you yeah. know? Can, can I <laughs> up your box, Elisa? Elisa? Look yeah, at you. Like, big, big up, Elisa. Big up, Elisa. Yeah, yeah Elisa. top oh, guy. Top yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, like, always, I always, that super always loved him. Always loved him. I would like Elisa to know that I too have a son. Um, fucking Cecil doesn't count, bro. For that, you got a son. Uh... <laughs> I, agree, I agree with you. That's the best super chat I've ever heard. That I'll say, like, yeah, brilliant, brilliant, yeah, brilliant, brilliant, yeah, brilliant. Is, is this well, how you well get the world class? Might say, world class. <laughs> I Jordan, say, get him on the show. He's been watching this podcast a long time. Oh, yeah, let's have him on the show. Let's send him a link and we can get rid of Turkish. You know what I mean? Like, try, and get, try and get in the box. Fine, yeah. Sheroy, Elisa, you're up. Double substitution. <laughs> Double sub. In-game management. We think about the long term here. Um, what a lovely name as well, Elisa. Like, brilliant name. Brilliant name. Brilliant name. Brilliant name. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to write, write him a poem after the show or something? I'll pass oh, it on right. to you. <laughs> Lee, I think it's Swahili for amazing. Yeah, <laughs> is that what it is? I, I think so, yeah. I think so. You yeah. said not Lee, it's Swahili yeah. for amazing. <laughs> I'll go along with that. Yeah. It's not <laughs> often a super chat. Fruit fruit changes with me, my whatever life. you want, like some fruit sweets, I'll bring whatever you want, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I just see Sheroy there. Sheroy, there he is. Where is, is he? Where is he? Oh, yeah, oh, there man. he is. He's gone now. He's gone now. He's there, man. Oh, Guna Lee's in the comments yeah. as well. I see Guna Lee earlier doing his Kai um, PR. King Kai. 
yeah, yeah. Yeah, Guna Lee, he'll tell us all about his Kai prop, but he won't talk about the Raya disrespect. Where is he? Give him a link as well. Get the <laughs> yeah, Royal, link. <laughs> Royal Rumble Forever Arsenal edition. <laughs> yeah, leave you out. I've gone there, I've got my phone out. Yeah. Listen, I know I'll give him a Guna Lee, he can do what he likes, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> the big old boy. <laughs> Um, where are we? Back to the super chats. Lee says you don't have to make outrageous statements for us to listen, George. Oh my god! But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> people generally don't believe me. But anyway, I can't be honest. It's too. I'm, it's too late. I'm too too tired. And the rag <clears> says <throat> James might know about team news and ticks. He he recently posted about how Tony is not in Arsenal's transfer list. What do you all think about it? What, what did you all think of his performance? Uh, uh, do you know what I'm going to say it now? I really enjoyed his performance yesterday. I thought he, he mm. was a constant thorn in Gabriel and Saliba. I didn't think that they were comfortable like they have been over the last few weeks. I think it was down to him. Do I think he's an Arsenal player? Probably not. Probably not. But I I, I was impressed with him yesterday. See, I, 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 saw him. I was going to say, I saw it the opposite. I thought Saliba and Gabriel ate him up. He had good moments. The effort, the effort from distance was inspired. I thought um, he was definitely a handful. But I was more, I came out of it more impressed with how Saliba and Gabriel dealt with him. I well, that's the great. point. I, I, I think thought that physically they had to be right on their game. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I mired him for me. It wasn't easy up there for him yesterday. And put him in a better team, I, 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 I think he does more than just score goals at what I see yesterday. He didn't really have a goal scoring chart. Kept one off the line. I know that he'd done that. And I, I, I felt he, I, I was impressed with him. I thought he'd done well. All the good chances that we created, I think he takes them all. So the Kai Havertz miss, I think he scores that. The Kai Havertz goal, I think he scores that. And anything else you can remember that was a good goal scoring chance, I think he takes all those chances. So I'm not saying we should sign him, but I, I thought he had a decent game considering he plays for Brentford and he's up against the best back four in the league right now. I think he's up against the best partnership in, in the Premier League and, and if not Europe, name me a better two than them. But I, I, what I like, which what I liked about his performance, but I didn't like, was there was one time Gabriel's rubbing his uh, ankle where he's left it late on him, oh, yeah. and wow. like, oh, yeah. done this and done that. You know, the proper centre forward play. You know, what I mean, he, he he tried to rough our two centre halves up, and he did a little, little bit, but we we handled it like and come back. There was a few times I like that one where. He tried to bully into Saliba. I don't know if you remember it. And I think it was the first half and, and he, Saliba swatted him down, like, you know. But he's prepared to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. I quite like that. I've got to say that. Yeah, unlike yeah. Kai, unlike Kai, he done all right. He done all right. Uh, but I, I think Kai, I said it last show, I, I think Kai has turned into our, our plan B option. Yes, B, yes. Like, right, with the yeah. tall guy that can get himself, you know, and... Yeah. Embroiled in the physical box activity, mm -hmm. he flick on, he can you know get on the end of things. So I think if we're going for a striker, we're more going to replace the Jesus now rather than going for a, a different profile. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't really mind it too much. I think Arteta's proven himself enough in the transfer window to to trust him with the decisions he's making. Ryan says, guys, good stream as usual. Turkish glad we got a W in the end, and for your son to see that on his first game, as I thought we bottled it. Lee, good to see you at the game as well. Love this show. Come on, Ryan. Big up, man. Mm -hmm. Good to see you as well. Shant says, Arteta has become less stubborn. He's willing to give things a second thought, especially since the new year. Kai up top, right back inverting. That's true. The right back inverting as well. Something mm -hmm. that we thought we might see earlier is coming into fruition now. KD, KD says, Josh Brennan, <laughs> big, up to all, big up to all four, including Jordan. Oh, you my mate, you, you absolute snake. <laughs> he told you that. He told you that. <laughs> your tires down tomorrow, I'll tell you. <laughs> um, what are your stances against the against our title charge? Will we get it? By the way, Kai tripped. I watched. I watched again. Kai tripped. Oh, on the I dive. It. I don't think he tripped. Big up, KD, KD. We've met him. Class hat. You might need to, um, to rewatch it again, KD. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'll rewatch it, but I didn't see a trip. But uh, I saw it a few times today. Yeah. <laughs> there ain't no trip. <laughs> um, title Charles, like we said, I think 1st of April were a better place, but 100% going into the game, that forever show is something that's going to be heavily discussed. So, KD, big up as always. And hope to see you in the summer pre season tour again. O'Malley says the fact that the ball was in play for 49 minutes is absurd. 
Last year, we would have drawn this game. We kept our heads. The goal felt inevitable. Somewhat did, but there was a bit of PTSD there with mm. the way we conceded the goal. And but, yeah. Remember when Tommy Asu got booked for not taking a throw in quickly enough? And the yeah. referees couldn't wait. Oh, yellow card there. No, God, yellow, that's gone there. That rule's gone, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we're not bothering with that anymore, are they? No, time wasting's fine. And by the way, not begrudge, nothing on Brentford. I get it. You've got to do your job. We've done that away from home. But come on, man. Like, are you going to force it or not? <laughs> Simon says, Lee, no, did you know what? I did, I did like one thing about Arsenal yes, I forgot to say that. <laughs> Shut up, Turkey. It was when, they, when that player feigned an injury and they kicked the ball out. And we, the goalkeeper, yeah. And we, we kept the ball. That oh, I like that. You know what I mean? Because I think if we did give the ball back there, that showed us like uh, that showed the mean streak. Liked it. Did yeah, you yeah. not see? Did you not see Nathan Collins trying to scrap at any given moment? Yeah, things that have nothing to do with him. He was straight at the like Gabriel was protesting to the ref. And Collins comes charging over. So Come I tweeted on, about it because I was like, because I think he's a good player. I actually kind of rate him. I was like, he really wanted to be involved, didn't he? And then there's this great clip of Erdegaard passing the armband to Jesus and the Brentford players. Yeah, 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 players. yeah, They're all they're all moaning. And then Collins comes steaming in. I'm like, yeah. This is after I'd had a go. I hadn't even seen this. I was like, what is he doing? But yeah, fair enough. Listen, Brentford did what they had to do, but we found a way. <clears throat> Let me get a few more super chats in because I'm not going to be able to get them all in right now because we do need to keep the show flowing. Simon says, Lee, did you see Kai Kat just sky the ball out of bounds, turn around, get back on the pitch, then drop the ball so they couldn't take the throw in? Yeah, yeah all those little things and all that. Like, you know, he actually done a, another one where he, he he kept the ball on the pitch as well. Did you see that one? Like when when they went to throw one in, like, and he he, he kept he kept the one that he had and just put it put a little pop on the pitch, like you know what I mean. And so they had to stop the play. Love him, love him, King Kai. <laughs> David says so nice meeting Lee on Monday. Great guy. I've always seen AFTV through a screen, but seeing you guys live, especially Lee, was a privilege. Big up. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Come on, Jamon says, big up, Jordan. I agree with you all about the lapse in concentration. 90% good, but then that 10% lapse was really bad. David. Big up, my G. Love you Abdullah says, my heart won't handle watching us beat City next game and complete <laughs> 10, 12 points against Pep and Klopp and still lose the league at White Hart Lane or Old Trafford. Nah, nah, don't. Yeah, let's not talk that into, into existence. Um. Precise says it seemed that we should buy all centre backs for the defence. We've been playing with four centre backs for a while. For a while now, we have been, and that's pretty much what he's doing. Precise mm -hmm. hashtag says, who do you guys think will get relegated? I'll probably speak for everyone and say the the three that come up. I think Luton might lead. do it. I think lead. Luton might yeah. do it. There you go. There. Do you know who I worry for? I worry for Everton. Yeah, I hope they go. No, I, I don't, I, I've got a soft spot for One's worried, one's worried. Worried. Everton. I've no, got a soft spot for Everton, but I watched them the other day. They, they, you know, they couldn't score. They, they, I thought that was a better team at times at Man United. They just can't yeah. score goals. Can't score goals. If you can't score goals, you're in trouble. And uh, they might have some more points docked again. And I think that, you know, I, I think I'll, I'll worry for Everton. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Um, apologies if I haven't got your super chat in. I will show it on the screen at some point if it's not a direct question. And hopefully I get some time at the end to go through a few more. Um, if I don't get that chance, then apologies, people. Like I said, got to keep the show flowing. Um, 4.3k in the building. So first and foremost, hit the Jeez. like button. Pass the thousand already. If we haven't passed a thousand, let's get to 2,000. We've got a lot of numbers in the building, so I don't know why it can't happen. And show us you want to see Forever Live a bit more than it has been people so hit that like button make sure you're subscribed all of our individual channel links are in the description below as well james has got his channel there lee's got his channel there jordan's got his channel there, <clears throat> Mike's there. jordan's hands up just because you want to ask all the listeners right now if we did a forever live in person would you come ah just saying to watch it i know a pub in highbury that we could rent out for 70 quid for two hours. It fits 80 people. I could make it happen. But you know you what? Come? You know what I'll do? People save it in the live chat because it's hard for me to keep up. And Jordan's he's he hasn't even got a pen ready to keep up on how many answers come back. So what I'll do 
is I'll pin a comment, but I have to pin that comment once the show's done because that's when the comment section opens up. Underneath that pinned comment, say yes, you'll come see a live show and we've got a little while left of the season. Um, Jordan says he can hook something up. So that's something that we can hook up for you guys and girls who watch the show. So just let us know underneath that pinned comment and we can gauge the the need and want for it. And and yeah, keep your ears. Not if you're coming, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could have been both. either of us, mate. That could have been either of us. Don't worry. That's true. That's true. But you I think we both know which one it is. <laughs> is. So now I'll be watching Griselda. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know what? It was the right message, but probably the wrong oh, message. Call it, call probably it. the wrong message. <laughs> You should have saved it for one of us to drop it. But I, it should have, it I should have. I should have. It is what it is. I've, I've killed it. <laughs> it is what it is. It's a good question, and we're going to put that in the comment section. But listen, we're going to slowly but surely keep it moving. There, it was a big weekend of football, um, but also a big weekend for AFTV supporting level playing fields. Hashtag Unite for Access campaign. If you don't I'll know, catch what the highlights. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this guy, can't you see? I'm. Can't you? Sorry. sorry what sorry, the? Sorry. He wouldn't do that on watch, Channel 4, would he? He wouldn't do that on Channel 4. on Channel 4 and, and talk sport. <laughs> you know what? I'm so to... sorry. That comment was funny. I watched it on the highlights. That was funny. Sorry. Sorry, Turkey. That's rude. It's rude. It's rude. Sorry. 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 I won't do it again. Well, I should have not. <laughs> sorry. I should have not. Thank you, Roy. Yeah, I'll start. This is going to be a quick substitution, you know. That might, that, that might need to happen any time now. Um, nah, it is what it is. It, it wouldn't be a show if I wouldn't interrupt him. It's just that he's... Sorry, no him. more, no more, no more. But like I said, big big weekend of football has just passed us. Um, and it was also a big weekend for AFTV supporting level playing fields. Hashtag Unite for Access campaign. And um, if you watched the watch along, I'm sure you know all about it already. If you didn't, I'm going to pass it over to James to let you know a little bit about it now. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I think important we had a bit of a conversation about it, um, but essentially it's to make people aware of Level Playing Field and their fantastic Unite for Access campaign. Um, got some sort of stats that if you go onto the Level Playing Field account on Twitter, and of course they have a website and everything, but AFTV have retweeted it as well. So there's a great video that really explains the campaign and raising awareness and why it's so important. But Essentially, Arsenal used this weekend when they faced Brentford as their opportunity to spotlight the campaign. Um, it's about raising awareness for, well, level playing field put it best, that disabled people make up almost a quarter of the UK population and that this campaign is to draw attention to the needs of disabled people and barriers that disabled people face. Football is for everyone. It can educate, entertain and be a force for good is very much their message. And this year, for the first time in the campaign's history, the focus was on non-visible disabilities. The majority of disabled people live with non-visible disabilities. That's 70% according to level playing field. And they very much talk about the disabled fan experience and how you know whether it be you know they're talking about what the day can be like and how it can be different and why it's important to raise awareness and make sure that the access you know is there and um we're, we were really proud to support it. Um, I spoke to a guy called Paul who's going to be joining Lee, Julian and Robbie on the Invincibles podcast. He um, he has Emmy and he was talking about his kind of experience and I'm, I'll be really honest I, I was quite ignorant to the fact that you know, he was sort of telling me about his experience and I was learning a lot and it's, you know, I'm excited for him to come on Invincible Podcast to share his story. Um, but I'm really sort of proud that we support this campaign. Level Playing Fields is the place to go find out. Like I said, we retweeted uh, their video, which kind of explains it. But um, yeah, this was the match that Arsenal chose to spotlight it and we wanted to support that as well. Um, and I know, you know, another reason why we wanted to talk about this was because I know, Jordan, you've spoken on this a lot and... Um, mm. That's all good to sort of get uh, your thoughts on it. Yeah, yeah. So I've done some work with um, Level Playing Field a couple of times over the last uh, few years. Um, two reasons. Firstly, because those that those that don't know, um, I've got disability. I'm not just stupid. I've also got an actual disability. Um, I was born with a, a, a deformed right foot. So I've got a prosthetic leg. I've got one leg, basically. And I've had prosthetics since I was 18 months years old where my foot was amputated from the ankle down. I can walk, I can run, I can have sex, I can do everything everyone else can do. No issues mobility-wise. 
but um, it's a disability nevertheless. And the, the level playing field uh, guys approached me a few years ago because I've got a big mouth and they wanted me to amplify a lot of the work they were doing. Um, and I think it's great work. I think I'm right in saying Arsenal, the Emirates is one of a handful of stadiums that is fully um, accessible. It's a modern stadium in relative terms, so it should be. But Arsenal do a really good job in ensuring that all Arsenal football fans, or as many as they can fit, <clears throat> have access to the stadium and have the best possible experience of watching Arsenal football clubs. We all love Arsenal. We want to watch our team. We're in a title race. It's goals, goals, goals. It's wacka wacka, happy days. But we could also forget that some people don't get to access um, the stadium in the way that a lot of us do. And the club do do a lot of good work. And I'm not here as a spokesperson for the club. I'm not getting paid. It's not a plug. But one of the things that I think Arsenal do do very well is considering those with disability and those with uh, extra needs to have the best possible experience they can have. I think I'm also right in saying they've got a neurodivergent room um, in the stadium as well for people that are neurodivergent as well. So they do a lot of great work and uh, le level playing field do do too. Um, and yeah, so I think it's really, really good that Arsenal highlighted this and the Arsenal fans, just to bear that in mind, just to bear in mind that everyone doesn't have the same opportunity or the same access that, that we all do. Um, but nevertheless, they love Arsenal as much as we do, if not more as well. So I'm glad that we're supporting this as well. So big up the boys. Yeah, absolutely. Go check out Level Playing Field. <coughs> for, um, but yeah, like, I echo everything you said there, Jordan. Oh, I never knew that, Jordan. Like, you know I mean? Nor did I. Uh, oh, I thought, I, oh, I thought you two knew. I, 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 didn't, I didn't either, no. Um, Cause how oh. does it come up if you don't if you can't see it? I know, you know what? I always do that Turkish. I always assume that people just know, and it's like, well, yeah. why would anybody know? You can't see it in the way that I walk. I don't. I wear, don't wear shorts because we live in the UK. So why would anybody know? But um, yeah, I've done a lot of work with various disabled organisations and charities because I personally, just a slight extra point, think disability is the last and the least spoken about of all the community groups. So we talk about race gender, sexuality, um, class. I think disability is just beyond even football. It's the thing that I don't think in this country we're very, very good at. Um, and I think in football, I don't think we're very good at ensuring that disabled football fans, <coughs> excuse me, um, can have as good an experience as possible. Um, but I know that, like I say, Arsenal are one of the few clubs that do take it seriously. So I give Arsenal a lot of, a lot of flack. But on this subject, I think they're leading the way in many ways so big up the club jordan do you mind me asking one of the things that came up in the conversations were um <coughs> whether you think arsenal should ever have a purple kit or a purple you know set you know whether it be training merch or whatever to sort of highlight the issue do you, have, you think that's something that the club should explore i mean I, I, don't see, I, I don't i don't see why not i think that all the premier league clubs during the black lives matter movement did what they could overtly of the kits to highlight racial injustice. We have the Rainbow Laces campaign for people from the LGBT community twice a season, I think it is. Um, I know that Tottenham Hotspur do a very good job in terms of their green and climate credentials. They, they highlight that very well. So why would we not? You know, I also think football is, is, is joy, it's fun, it's entertainment, it's a sport, but it's also a vehicle for many of society's um, uh, issues. So why not let something with the profile of Arsenal Football Club or a Premier League Football Club highlight issues that are not only affect Arsenal fans, but affect everybody. As you said, a quarter of the population have a disability and think about the amount of people that aren't disabled, but know someone who is. So we'll, we'll all have a grand, a granddad, a brother, a sister, a child, a neighbour who's disabled. So we're all directly or indirectly affected by disability. So yeah, I think it'd be a great idea. I'm up for that. And people in the comments are loving the idea. So make it happen, yeah. Arsenal. Let's get a purple kit. Yeah, man. Let's do it. Yeah. Great cause. Go check out Level Playing Field. Um, and yeah, I can see a lot of support in the in the live chat. So big up James as well, who's kind of taking the lead on that over here at AFT. Mm, well done, man. And doing a lot of good work. And Jordan as well. Um, all right. Well, we're an hour, 19 minutes in. And we're going to move on to Porto. Um, I know we haven't got a lot of time left, but it is a massive game. Um, we've got a few players back now but we're playing very good football at this moment in time. I mean, if I ask about lineup, does does anyone have any anything controversial they might want to see or, or think might be controversial in starting 11-wise? If Martinelli's fit, he comes back. 
little rumours are that he might not be. <clears throat> nah, no. he won't be. He won't be. He won't be. As much as I, I want him to be, I don't... Yeah, he won't be. Havertz, Havertz remains up top. Jesus, who's probably been a, a, you know, our best attacker in the Champions League, maybe. I think... I, think I, I was trying to digest, digest that question for a second. I, I think mm. Trossard, as much as I love him, people know I've championed for this guy to play. Not on the left. You, you don't drop Havertz, yeah. You don't drop Havertz with the form he's in and the, the different profile he's offering. Um, and on the left, especially when you don't have Kivior, Kivior is doing... Re- sorry. Uh, sorry, let me rephrase. Kivior's doing really well to try to replicate down the left what Ben White can do sometimes down the right. Um, but it just feels like both players want to play two century, both Tr- Trossard and Kivior. They're better in those areas. I would... This might be a bit wild... For the sake of just getting the right profile and pace out there, I think you go for a Reese Nelson or a Jesus. Probably Jesus because he's closest Jesus. to that first team quality. Yeah. But the closest profile wise to Martinelli is Nelson. Yeah. I have a sneak feeling Martinelli will be okay. If it is a gash, you might think, yeah, I might, you know, I might, I might not be great for it. But if I'm having two weeks off, I'll play this one. I saw something about crutches though. Mm. I think that can I think cool. that can be quite normal to be on crutches just while you're trying not to strain it or make it worse. I when was he on crutches? Yesterday, apparently. Yesterday. The apparently, the, the gash is at a place where it's a normal <clears throat> foot movement generally. So he, he had to be on crutches because if he maybe, you know, takes a normal step, the gash opens up again. So if he's, if he's on crutches... 48 hours before the game, he ain't like them. St- yeah, it's not happening. That's, that's, that's a couple of weeks at least. Yeah, that, that's sound good. <laughs> it's good. I to thought he was on clutches when he came out, out of the game against you. <laughs> I just clocked. What did he say? What did he say? I, what did he say? <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> that's that James. Game. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> I <laughs> can't do these day shows. So, ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, uh, back to where where was we? Um, uh, well, the no, let, let's into the secret now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. No, no, they're, chatting, they're chatting about the gash. One that we want to open up. Is it the same oh, one? Oh, get out, get out, right? Oh, oh, well, oh, oh, speak oh, yourself. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, boys will be boys. James, the problem. I'm not saying anything. Hey, Sheree's local, you know. Don't worry. If you want to say something, you got there's protection there. A lot of people have been. I, I, I said it's, it's good to know where the gash is. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> is that what we're saying? <laughs> That's what he said. I'm trying, I'm trying Just to hold You know, for a bloke that likes sex, I suppose he's probably right. You know what I mean? Like, well, I didn't say it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Back to 8 a.m.s, man. I thought 11, I thought 10 to 11 p.m. would work, but we're back to 8 a.m.s from next week. James, um, problem. I'm a child. No, I'm, 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 I'm an immature 16 year old. I shouldn't be on these. <laughs> ah, so that's that. Jesus it's comes on the left. I think that is that is the favorable option for everyone. Um, any more questions? Does Partey come back into the fold? Jorginho is no. still playing no, well. No. You know, you same team play. other than. Probably Jesus for Trossard and obviously Raya for uh, Ramsdale. So, do you not think it was completely Arteta then that that went in with with tactics that people said are not to lose more than to win against Porto? Because surely that performance against Porto, you'd want to throw something else into the works. Maybe Jesus is that something else, but we was uh, we was very different against them than we was yeah, in the uh, other matches. I, know, I I I I still go back to that. We didn't know how to play that. You know what I mean? Like I think we were thinking the nil nil was all right. I think if if the away goals rule was about, I think we'd have gone for it a little bit more. I don't know. I just, just maybe just caught us a little bit. You know, listen if if it weren't for that wonder strike at the end because uh, we got nil nil and I think we'd have all been happy, you know what I mean? So I don't know, you know, it wasn't necessarily about the performance, it was about the result, and we didn't get it at the end of the day. I don't, I don't know, I don't know why that wasn't. When you look at the way we've been playing in the league, it's it, it, it was a strange performance. That's yeah, that's why I'm just thinking, do, mm. do we do anything different? But 
seems like everyone's happy. Um, Martin Ali out, Jesus comes in, and and we keep it moving. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. I mean, all right. It's it's, it's a must win, right? It, this is a must win game. Like, I mean, obviously we need to win to get through, but I mean, in in the big scheme of things, where the clubs go in, you I'm know. Nervous, we, we oh, I'm nervous. Nervous. I'm nervous. I'll yeah. say something controversial here, like you know, you might think because it's a completely different competition. But I think if we go out of this, we ain't got no chance of winning the league. I think we need to win this. Feel good factor going into Man City for two weeks. I, I, this is, we have to win this game. I don't want us being in that position where we play a game and then we've got to wait a week. You know what I mean? Like, let's have those games in midweek. So you're playing like, what, are we all looking forward to Tuesday? I can't wait. I'm can't going. Wait. I, I don't want to be waiting weeks now. Let's keep yeah, it going. Keep it going. I, yeah, I can't wait for it because it's been a long time since we've been in knockout stages of the Champions League. Yeah, I'm, with, yeah. I'm with Jordan. There's I, nerves there. To win this one. I don't I'm nervous. On the I, don't what, I, 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 nervous. I don't know why I'm nervous. And I, we shouldn't be nervous. This should be a routine 3-1 win, right? We're better than Porto. We're on form. We're scoring goals. Defensively great. I, just, <sighs> I don't know why. I'm just nervous. If we, if we go out of the Champions League <laughs> to Porto, that would be so bad. It'd be oh, really, be really, 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 really be massive. Be so I think bad. it brings a lot of um, doubts, unnecessary yeah. doubts. You know, people be talking about, oh, well, we, you know, our European form and, you know, over the last three years, get the job done, get it mm. done. I think this is a, this is massive for our, for our season. If we go on and win this game, it, you know, I can't stress how, how important it is to get through this round. I'll be I'll, I'll be devastated if we don't get through this round because I'll tell you another thing, we've been pushing for the Champions League. We haven't played a Champions League team yet. I know they're all champ, but I, I want you know, we haven't got one of the big guns yet. And I think if we can get through this round, we'll be the won't be the favourite, even though I think we're we're good enough to beat anybody in, in it. You know, we got like this. I, I, I can't emphasize how big this game is. I, I really don't I can't these two big games, Brentford and this one here are so big for what's going to happen for us in this season, in my opinion. I, I agree with you, Lee. I think Arteta's got a really big job in, forget the run we're on, just treat this game in isolation. We have mm. to win this game. Forget Brentford, forget the next game. You know I me, mean, one game at a time, Merchant, anyway. But he has to focus the guys. Like th th We have to win. We have to score early, I think. We have to... We have to make this a game where we don't take it to the last minute of the game. Mm. Let's get this done as early as possible. Let's put our chances away. We know we'll create chances. No stupid mistakes at the back. And let's handle business like we're supposed to. Because as Turkish said, the trajectory we're meant to be going on as a team, we can't be going out of the Champions League at the first knockout round. That that that, that can't happen. No, that just I, can't happen. I'm, I'm with you on this. Not to Porto as well. I mean, no disrespect, yeah. but, you know. We had higher aspirations than that. But I do, you know, all things considered, think that we will turn it round. Um, before we start talking about predictions, let me get the prediction table up. No change. No one predicted the correct score against um, Brentford, but we all predicted a win. So we all got a point um, for the audio listeners because we are on audio platforms as well. James is top with 32 points. I'm in second on 28. Lee's in third on 26 and Jordan two behind on 24. So there's a healthy lead there for James, and as well as being top, that means he goes first in the predictions. So go on, James, what are you saying? 1-0, and we win on penalties. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, you think this is going to be easy? No, they're going to put us through it. Yeah. Put us through it. Of course, they yeah. are. How oh, well we play. This is Arsenal Football Club. We are getting... Strap in everyone. Tuesday will be stress. And we have to be very, very aware of the dark arts. Porto are a seasoned European team. They'll be diving, they'll be wasting time, they'll be doing mm. whatever they can do. So we've got to be mm. really wise to any kind of any of that kind of you know dark the dark artery. Just mm. making a word up there, but you know what I mean. Yeah, they've 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 scored eight goals in the last couple of games, conceded nothing as well. So I had to quickly mm. check. I'm still gonna go three one. Mm. Why not? Funny, isn't it? Yeah, let's let's see. I thought James was going to get the free one against Brentford, um, but yeah, it wasn't mm. to be. Carly, two nil. Two nil. That'd be, that would be nervy in itself. Yeah, mm. I, I, I think it's going to be a real nervy game. I tell you, like you know what I mean. So, Guy and Jordan, I'm 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 with James. I'm concerned. I think two one win on penalties. Nasty, nasty mm. night that would be, but obviously we take it. 
Okay. Uh, so everyone's gone for a win in the 90 minutes, which is what counts. But James and Jordan think the wins will be um, by a one goal margin and they predict that we'll win on penalties. Not that that matters, it's only the 90 minutes that are taken into consideration. So James has gone one. Yeah, so if it's three, extra time and it's say one nil and then it goes to two nil, that's not right. It's only after 90 minutes. Is that what yeah. we're So we're, we're getting that out now, are we? We'll agree yeah. on that now. Right. Okay. Like, I don't want no people put, getting extra points for doing nothing. All right. I just, yeah. just want to get that out there. Yeah. So, so if, we, if we win on penalties, Jordan and I get an extra point for every penalty scored, right? Why? Well, yeah. Well, why not? Just a couple ex, eight extra points. Yeah. And Jordan will go above Lee. No, yeah, that sounds good to me. I don't even know what you're talking about. Right? No, that's no. just being like you know, like you know, he's back in his he's back in his school school desk, and he like you know, <laughs> being a class clown. Something <laughs> 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 else. <laughs> uh, that's the prediction table out the way predictions out the way and that leads us on bang on hour and 30 minutes in to comments of the day everyone ready with comments of the day yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, i'd like to um i'd like to kick things off because obviously so i've got two things to show you i bring imagery this is the thing i'm actually here to not just read them out and show you so you obviously saw my comment of the day big up friendly bane for this one which we we saw earlier in case you missed it very very funny it wasn't even on this show but i, I give it and secondly i get asked a lot let's get that overlay back up where is it I, this is why i'm not host there we are people ask me why lee and i don't get on why we don't like each other and it's all him like it's all his fault he is the reason we're not friends and i've brought proof and i'd like to show you that proof this sofa bed from Emma Sleep comes with an inbuilt Emma mattress which allows you to go from sit to sleep in just 10 seconds. Coming when you break it down. Not in a 3-2-5, more in a 2-3-5. Uh, but just look at where Jorginho is. <laughs> <laughs> this guy... It's an utter disgrace. <laughs> that is brilliant. That is brilliant. <coughs> I have to do what I'm told, James. To that is I'm brilliant. <laughs> you know what's mad as well, yeah? I was coming out the stadium yesterday. Who was I with? Well, obviously, after I've done my interview and whatnot. Um, and I was walking back with Little Man because I had to get out of there straight away. Oh, I can't even bring it up now. But I just randomly see Graham just posted up against the wall with a notepad out. Just working away, and I didn't even interrupt him. I said he's doing the tactical insight stuff right now. <laughs> he recorded like straight saying, after big up Graham. <laughs> Bro, against the wall, just in a corner. Just I saw it. I said, Yeah, leave him to it. Leave and I know exactly it. how that would have gone. Graham would have been there writing notes. People would have Graham, can I get a picture? Fuck off, I've got <laughs> tactical insight, mate. You know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> the best bit about that video is I mean, big up to Ryan and everyone involved in the production. It's the bit where Graham goes. And you have him in a three-five-two, and then leave them. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Do you know between us, right? Between us four, and, uh, f don't say nothing to no one else, right? Right? No, no, no. Of course, I don't want anybody. I don't want anybody else to know this, like you know. No, no, no. Of course, of After course. every tactical insight show, he sends me the link. <laughs> <laughs> I watch that every That's single so, show. It's so rude. <laughs> You're awful, he must have about 55 uh, unread messages. <laughs> but he still sends it. He still gets sent. I'd say we like that way. Big up, Graham. Uh, big up, Graham. 100%. He's good. Uh, well, I, hope he, I, I hope, he, ta I hope he takes this the right way as well. Because listen, we love yeah, Graham. He, he loves it. He loves it. It does. Ah, I might as well bring it up now. There he is. You see, just there. He's just chilling there against the. Against no. The, he's, <laughs> he wasn't messing about, bro. <laughs> I thought you take that job serious, tactical insight. <laughs> Graham is. He, listen, he loves it. He loves oh, it. Oh, uh, man. Let's move. Legend. Let's move. Um, I've actually got. A couple here, but let me get this one in from Nicholas. It says, everyone mentions how kind and nice James is, but I have to be honest, he is sneaky evil. Big up everyone. Best pod on YouTube and all other platforms. And I think we've had more evidence of that today. If, I, if I'm 100. And I, I've, um, actually, I've got one more from Berav. New to the podcast, really enjoying it. Jordan, 
I'd recommend Love is Blind next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Should get the juices flowing. <laughs> yeah, I saw that as well. <laughs> I'm getting all these DM of people that are just recommending these programs to me. And a lot of them at the times that Arsenal are playing. So yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, let me go next. I've got one here. Um, I can't pronounce the name, so I won't try. But uh, oh no, actually, I've lost it. I've lost it. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh yeah, here it is. Saw this tweet by Jessica Kennedy early this morning. Arsenal women filling up stadiums. Arsenal men emptying them. Stunning work. Do you know what? That was, I'll see that. It's absolutely oh, the best tweet of the oh, year. So far, that was fantastic. Oh, I was like, yeah, yeah, smashed it. Smashed oh, it. Enjoyed that one. <clears throat> that was brilliant. You up, Lee? Yeah, I've got Chris Fraser. Oh, I learned so many new words from Lee. <laughs> Big up, Lee, when the words are not enough, judges. But seriously, best pod out there. The four of you are a perfect blend of banter and genuine ball knowledge. Don't know about gashes, but definitely ball knowledge. You nearly butchered that one as well, but fuck it. Mean. <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost. I mean, love. I mean, yeah, thanks for the love on the pod, guys, but. Did we ever find out how we did in this bloody award? We've never found well, we it. Really. <laughs> it, 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 it hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened. No, what no, we no. Is, this the, is this the We're Oscars? We're not winning one, it now, are we? No, <laughs> no, it's the Sports Industry Awards. I think it's in a few weeks. I think it's in a few weeks. Are you, are you invited? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a judge. So where's no, well, we, better win it, we better win it then. <laughs> are we going or what? I don't get it. What's well, I, not in our category. I can't judge this category. I judge another category. But yeah, I'm, I'm... what happens if we get if we do get up for it? Do we we get invited there or, or whatever? What happens? You know, I don't know. Free night. Is it free night? Know. They must let you know in advance if yeah, you've know won. We'd, we'd know by yeah. now. It'd probably be the night when we got our live show. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. Yes. <laughs> it won't be. Where are they? They've got to get yeah. their award. Yeah. <laughs> we can do a video link. Yeah, yeah. So it's not really nice, but there it is, you're still in the pub. <laughs> uh listen, we're gonna wrap it up here, people. There's still four K in the building. Um so love for the love because you've stayed with us from beginning to end. It's been an hour coming up to forty minutes. Um but it, it was it, it was worth it. It was worth it. Arsenal are in a great place, raising awareness for level playing field, talking about that huge game coming up Tuesday night against Porto. And then there's a little break in between as well. We'll be back after Porto straight away, probably bright and early Wednesday morning. And um, so that'll be out some point on Wednesday. But we've also got content coming out before that, after that match day live, the Porto game. Make sure you're there, people. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, notification bell on, and all individual channel links are in the description below. Um, we'll be back on Wednesday. It won't be live, but make sure you hit the like button right here, and we'll be back live again real soon, people. Love for the love. Peace. We're out.